Mike, welcome. Uh, listen, the, the tweet I put out with your forecast yesterday, I think, has been retweeted thousands and thousands of times. Anything you, you want to clarify about this forecast uh, for starters? So I don't think we made very extreme assumptions to get to the numbers we got to. Uh, basically, this, the part of the economy that is exposed here, which is airlines, movie theaters, things of that nature, is around 7 percent of the economy. And we assume activity in, in uh, that part of the economy is depressed in March, April, and starts to recover in, uh, in May. Uh, and that may uh, prove optimistic or pessimistic, that seems that, but that's what we're predicating our forecast on. And with that, uh, we get that big decline in, in second quarter growth. How much in terms uh, so, of government stimulus is priced into these forecasts, which both see the big decline in the first half and also a, a decent size, an 8 percent rebound in Q3? Yeah. So, uh, look, if, if these uh, activities come back online, uh, then we should see that alone should give us a lot of strength in the third quarter. Uh, again, that may prove optimistic or pessimistic. Uh, uh, we are assuming around a trillion dollars of fiscal stimulus, mo hopefully most of it coming in the third quarter to to really ensure that the economy does pull out of this uh, uh, in good fashion. And that seems to be at least what we're going to get. So Third at least quarter, in that though. Regard. Are you saying that well, we're I don't know. Yeah, no, July? Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're expecting a trillion dollars of fiscal stimulus. Got it. Hopefully most of it will be concentrated in the third quarter because that one, it prob when it, we think it would be most helpful, hmm. right? I mean, getting a lot of stimulus in place in March and April is probably m won't matter if you can't leave your house, right? Mm -hmm. But. We, we want to make sure that when the when the worst is passed, that the economy, you know, really comes back uh, with some vigor. Uh, and it does seem like, you know, given that a lot of the proposals have these uh, rebate checks, um, uh, which at least by historical experience usually gets paid out in two or three months, uh, that could help, you know, cement in place expectations of a summertime return to uh, uh, to better growth numbers. Two questions, Mike, that came up a lot yesterday. Uh, the first one is why bother making the forecast? And I think I know the answer. It's your job. But uh, again, is there and listen, you had a ton of caveats in this note, which are about nighty and uncertainty. And, and this just being a really tough time. So is there something to be said for chucking guidance altogether? Or do you feel like you can actually get a pretty good handle on what this hit is going to look like? Uh, I don't think we can get a good handle, but I think um, we can at least see under different assumptions for the, the, the course of the virus what that could mean for the economy. So we need to make assumptions about the course of the virus, about how, how this spills over into uh, defaults and things of that nature. But at least we can start to war game when we, when we think through uh, these things. So we're not totally in the dark as long as we understand that there are different pockets of uncertainty, uh, a lot of them epidemiological in nature. Exactly. Um, and, and look, I, I think from the Fed's perspective, so they shut their forecast. I think they may be in a little bit of a different boat because uh, I think, in, and Powell, I think, kind of alluded to this when he said it would be counterproductive. Uh, you know, if you put out some some uh, numbers that are realistic but but quite downbeat uh, by an institution as respected as the Fed, that may reinforce some of the more yeah. Um, cautionary behavior. You know, you guys uh, I obviously that would have to adjust the numbers or we all would have to to kind of take into account if coronavirus comes back in the fall or, or next year, that kind of thing. Like you said, this all relies on what happens with the virus. But in, in that context, one more question is this uh, kind of private figure that Steve Mnuchin had mentioned about unemployment in a worst case scenario reaching 20 or 25 percent. Is something like that feasible? And your current unemployment forecast only has us going a little bit over 6% in the middle of the year and then falling back to the fives by year end. Uh, yeah, so we have, un that's right. Um, <clears throat> and given some of the anecdotes we've heard from some of the state labor offices uh, just this week, maybe that's optimistic, but that's based on a, a simple relation known as Oaken's rule, which, which uh, ties unemployment, changes in unemployment to GDP growth. So we're not uh, trying to make uh, too radical a statement in that regard. In terms of Mnuchin's uh, comments, um, you know, I think in this environment, nothing's off the table, but that seems pretty extreme. And, and if I recall correctly, it was in a, the context of no policy response. And, Correct. You know, like yes. if, the Fed didn't, if the Fed didn't respond earlier this week or, or throughout the week, if we didn't get any stimulus uh, or weren't expecting any stimulus, you know, I, I, you can't take that off the table. But that is uh, a pretty extreme. How big would the GDP hit have to be to hit 20 percent unemployment, 50, 60 percent? I mean, yeah, it would. It, yes, it would be. Um, and it would need to be sustained, I think, over uh, probably a couple quarters. Wow.